4.76 billion people use social media for two to three hours daily. Specifically, the average teen uses social media for eight hours and 40 minutes every single day. Almost 97% of all teenagers use social media, a young and vulnerable group of people who are overusing these platforms and becoming addicted. Since smartphones have been released and social media has become more prevalent, there has been a drastic increase in the rate of mental health issues being diagnosed. Specifically, major depressive disorder and anxiety diagnoses have increased in adolescents and adults. Social media may not be as glamorous and fun as it seems to be. Mental health problems are common in going adolescents and young adults. In fact, 10-20% to of these individuals are affected by mental health problems, where depression and anxiety are the most prevalent. Depression and anxiety have increased by 70% in the past 25 years. While the brain of these young individuals is still under development, mental health problems lead to detrimental outcomes. This includes dropping out of school, substance abuse, and in the worst case, suicide. Many factors contribute to mental health problems, but it seems like social media is one of the prevalent ones. Social media platforms are used to interact with others virtually, either visually or verbally. It might seem like that the use of social media might be beneficial to interact with your families and friends, but in reality, it is not. The fear of missing out, also known as FOMO, is very common in young adults using social media. Seeing families and friends involved in activities that you're not included in could lead to isolation and depression. To further elaborate on these findings, a study done by Computers and Human Behaviors analyzed 1,787 young adults. Those using 7 to 11 social media platforms were three times more susceptible to depression and anxiety compared to those that were using fewer platforms. One possible mechanism was the effects of multitasking, which is previously shown that we cannot do. Using social media a lot could also lead to delayed and poor quality of sleep, which further hinders our attention span. This can then lead to poor memory, cognition, and mood. Another study done by the University of Pennsylvania took 143 undergraduate students. The control group continually used social media, while the experimental group had to limit the usage of 10 minutes per platform per day. After three weeks, results showed that those using less social media felt less isolated or lonely and were less depressed. While social media is affecting young adults and growing adolescents, it's also having an impact on older individuals. Therefore, social media usage seems to be leading to mental health problems worldwide. However, many other factors such as environmental predisposition affect the severity of increased anxiety and depression. It seems like we need to balance our mental health and our screen time. I initially thought social media as a way to connect with my family and friends, but it has affected my mental health terribly. For starters, it leaves me feeling inadequate about my own life or appearance. The content that I see on my feeds only shows idolized portrayals of life, where everyone only shows the most glamorized aspects of their lives. Oftentimes, these pictures are manipulated or fabricated just for the sake of posting it, but I can't help but feel inadequate about my own life as it doesn't measure up to these standards. The reality is that nobody's life is perfect, but when you only see the glamorized depictions on social media, it's easy to compare yourself and inf feel inferior to others. As a result of this inadequacy, my self-esteem plummeted. I often turn to social media for validation from others, whether it's likes, comments, or reposts. I tend to seek validation to boost my self-esteem, but this has turned me into a dependent person on social media just to get this approval. When I don't get this approval, it lowers my self-esteem and my confidence. With everyone always appearing in their best light, I also always find myself comparing myself to unrealistic comparisons. My feed is flooded with unrealistic pictures of influencers and it's easy to forget that they have their entire teams dedicated to their hair and makeup. I end up comparing myself and it takes a toll on my mental health and it makes me feel insecure as I don't live up to these standards. The feelings of inadequacy and low self-esteem can become detrimental as it negatively impacts the mental health of social media users. Social media has produced a culture of perfectionism where users strive to achieve an unrealistic and glamorized lifestyle and whether these standards can be met or not, it negatively impacts the users. It's important to practice healthy social media consumption by limiting usage and being aware of these negative impacts. When you're reading an article for a class or maybe a couple of chapters of a good book, does this task seem daunting for you recently? Even though a few years ago you would have been able to do it with ease? This might be attributable to the effect that social media is having on our attention spans. 
When we're constantly scrolling through our phones, looking for entertainment, and we can't bear to experience any boredom anymore, we're actually conditioning our tolerance to shorten unless we're doing an activity that provides us with instant gratification. So things that are good for us but less entertaining, like exercising, studying, or reflecting, we're less likely to do those actions because we don't feel the reward instantly by getting a surge of dopamine. Hey, am I losing you right now? Just think about it. All of these big media companies, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, they're all taking advantage of this by making videos that are typically under a minute long that can help capture you into a constant cycle of scrolling for stimulation. One moment you're looking at a global crisis, then a new invention, then a cool new dance and a yummy recipe, all within just a couple of minutes. This can actually lead to an addiction because you're taking advantage of our natural reward pathway. If you don't believe me, watch this. Now, let's talk about the physiological mechanism of dopamine addiction and how it works. Dopamine is a type of neurotransmitter that serves as the chemical messenger between nerve cells in the brain and between the brain and the body. Dopamine is commonly referred to as the feel-good hormone as it induces a sense of pleasure and drives motivation during pleasurable experiences. These activities that make your brain feel good produce a significant amount of dopamine leading to a feeling of euphoria and an inclination to seek out more of that experience. Dopamine is a vital component of the brain's reward systems, which evolved to reward behaviors necessary for survival, such as eating, drinking, competing, and reproducing. Now that we know what dopamine is, let's talk about how it is released from the brain. Whenever we do something rewarding, such as eating food, shopping, or exercising, the mesolimbic dopamine pathway, also known as the reward pathway, is activated. This process begins in the ventral tegmental area located in the midbrain. The VTA contains neurons which produce dopamine, and after a pleasurable activity, the VTA is activated, releasing dopamine into the NAC. The nucleus accumbens, also known as the NAC, is the pleasure center of the brain and is located in the basal ganglia. Once the dopamine is released into the NAC, a cascade of chemical reactions is produced and this ultimately results in feelings of pleasure and motivation. This is why social media is so addicting as it triggers a significant release of dopamine in the brain, inducing a feeling of elation that drives further consumption. Social media addiction can have similar effects on the brain as drug misuse and addiction. Scrolling through social media platforms triggers a significant release of dopamine, inducing a feeling of pleasure and satisfaction in the user. However, similar to drugs, continued use of social media can raise the threshold for this type of pleasure, causing individuals to spend more and more time on these platforms to achieve the same level of satisfaction. Additionally, excessive social media use can lead to a decrease in the brain's ability to produce dopamine naturally, resulting in emotional lows and negative impacts on mental health when not using social media. It is important to monitor and regulate social media use to avoid addiction and potential negative consequences. Therefore, social media usage can potentially turn into a harmful addiction, if not managed properly. Excessive usage can make you feel body dysmorphia and inadequacy, as well as decrease your attention span and ability to focus. It can also increase your likelihood of developing mental health disorders such as depression and anxiety based on clinical evidence. It's critical to use social media safely before it becomes an addiction. So, stop looking at the screen and look out for yourself. Manage your social media before it manages you.